Welcome to my short video on getting XG Boost up and running in R on Windows. Before we start, let's take a quick look at what XG Boost is. So you'll see here I've got myself a nice little Windows 8 VM spun up in Azure. And uh, if you're wondering why it's running a little bit slow, well, that's why. It'll get faster, I promise. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. For those who aren't familiar, let's pull up XGBoosts. XGBoost is a uh, open source. Excuse me. There we go. This is the right. This is the right URL that we want to get to on GitHub. Uh, XGBoost is short for Extreme Gradient Boosting, and what this is is an open source algorithm originally put together by a graduate student at the University of Washington uh, around improving a machine learning algorithm known as gradient boosting. Uh, this is a this is a algorithm that is very very commonly used in both business settings as well as in more advanced settings like Kaggle competitions. And in particular, most of the big libraries like scikit-learn on Python or the various algorithms and packages that you can get in the R universe contain variants of this, this, this gradient boosting technique, especially for trees. But what XGBoost has is a much more powerful mechanism to train these, these algorithms um, and do it much, much faster than uh, different alternatives provide. And as such, XGBoost has become extremely popular um, with Kaglers in their competitions. You'll find that most of the um, top 25 in most competitions typically use XG Boost as part of their ensembles. And if you don't know what an ensemble is, it's, it's not really germane. Just know that XG Boost is a really, really good thing to have in your toolbox. It's very useful for business settings. Uh, in particular, if you need a classification algorithm that's extremely powerful but extremely versatile, uh, let's say like for a fraud detection or something like that, uh, XGBoost is something you want to check out. So let's get down to it. As I mentioned before, this is a uh, Azure VM that I spun up. And the reason why I did that is that I wanted a clean machine to work with. And the reason for that is to get XGBoost up and running uh, from bits from GitHub, which I recommend because XGBoost is a very active project. And if you build directly from GitHub into your R environment, you're going to get access to the latest bits and features. And new stuff gets added all the time. And uh, to be honest with you, I frequently update my XGBoost packages on my own workstation in my house. So you want a clean machine because if you have any sort of existing Unix build tooling, let's say, for example, you have Sigwin installed on your Windows box, you will find that uh, building XGBoost will be difficult. So what I recommend doing is removing any of that stuff if you have it installed. When I first used XGBoost, I actually had Sigwin on my workstation. I quite frankly couldn't get it to work. So I took Sigwin off, took R off, took R Studio off, and started with a clean build, and it worked like a charm. So that's what I recommend. Uh, if you're really interested in XGBoost, and I would suggest that you should be because of its power and versatility, you know, start with a relatively clean environment. So that's what we've got here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to download our studio because I'm a big fan and hopefully you are too. So you just go to rstudio.com slash download and that brings up the, the download screen here. So we're on Windows, so we're going to go ahead and click that we want the, the Windows installer. I'm just going to save that. Now we're also going to need base R, right? Because our studio is simply a, a development environment that sits on top of the base R programming language. Handedly enough, the R Studio download page has a link to the R Studio website, or excuse me, the R programming language website. So we can go ahead and just open that bad boy up. And you can see here that we are on CRAN, the comprehensive R archive network, where we can get the bits for the R programming language itself. Since we're running Windows, we're going to go ahead and click on the download R for Windows link. And because we're on a clean install, and that's the assumption I'm making for this video, 
We're just going to go ahead and click up here where it says install R for the first time. And we're going to download the current version, which at this at the time of this recording is version 3.2.3. We'll just go ahead and download that as well. Now, because we're running on Windows and because I'm making the assumption that we have a clean machine, we're also going to need something called R Tools. And the easiest way to think about R Tools is that it's a collection of Unix style build tools for Windows that R needs to actually build packages. Okay, so you can see here that we're on the R Tools website. It's pretty easy. You just type R Tools into your favorite search engine and it should pop up as one of the, if not the first, the top five links that come back. Now you'll see here that there's a bunch of versions. Now what we saw from the previous page is that we've downloaded 3.2.3. So the first two versions of our tools will work for us because it is compatible with the version we just downloaded. But what I would heartily recommend is that you go with a frozen version. Uh, it just gives you, you know, stable bits. And when you're talking about build tools and compilers, I would say you just want the stable bits. So we're going to go ahead and download rtools32.exe. And that will give us our base set of binaries that we need here. Let's go ahead and view our downloads. We're good. All right. So let's pop that bad boy open. All right. So I'm going to show you a particular order to install these. To be completely honest, I've never actually took the time to try all the variants of the various do you, can you install R first or can you install R tools first? Obviously, you want to install R before R Studio, the R programming language before the R Studio IDE. But this is the uh, this is the order that I install them, and it's worked like a charm for me and for others that I've helped get XGBoost up and running in R on Windows. So just take it as you will. All right, so we're going to install R first, and we're going to assume English. And you click next, and there's the, the, the nut license for it and where it's going to install by default. You can change this if you'd like. I just keep the defaults. So I've never really had any reason to do anything different. I just leave everything checked. Now, in theory, if you're only running 64-bit, you don't need the 32-bit files. And you can determine whether you need these things if space is a, is a big deal for you on your local machine. But R is pretty small, so I, I don't I really worry about it. I just install everything. And I don't want to start menu, so we'll leave that off. Now, this is, this is kind of important. So I, I, I get rid of the desktop icon because I don't use command line R. I use R Studio. But you do want to make sure that these two things uh, are checked down here in the registry entry because registry entries section because these are quite important and you would be surprised at how many things get really cranky if you don't have like the version number stored in the registry. Um, associating R with our data files is convenience if nothing else, but I just leave it checked by default. So we'll take those. All right, so here we are installing R. I'm not gonna bother to pause the video because these installations are usually quite speedy. And we're rolling here. Okay, so we get R installed. Now I install R Studio, or excuse me, R Tools next. And again, of course, you're going to select the English language. Well, you would, <laughs> sorry, I accept the English language, obviously, because that's the language in which I speak. Uh, again, you can change where you'd like to put our tool. I just stick it off of the C drive just because I've really had no reason to put it anyplace else. Now, you can add extras if you're going to build R itself. For, this, for the purposes of this particular video, we're not going to worry about building R itself, so we'll just accept the defaults here. And I would heartily suggest adding R tools to your, your path. 
as well as saving the version, version information in the registry. This just makes things so much easier from just a config perspective. Now, if you like to keep your path relatively pristine and clean, you could try and work around it. Me personally, uh, I don't really worry so much about that. That's a personal choice on my part. All right, we like that, and we're going to go ahead and install this. And this shouldn't take too long. As you can see, the progress bar is relatively speedy. Now, in a future video, I plan on um, showing XGBoost actually in action uh, as part of my series of introduction to data science with R videos. I plan on using XGBoost in particular on the uh, Titanic data set because of the very uh, non-linear nature of the problem space. It's very amenable to something like a, a booster tree. All right, and lastly, we're going to go ahead and install our studio. Again, I just essentially use the defaults. Your mileage may vary. And again, this shouldn't take take too long. Now, it is worthy of note. Let's go flip over to the XGBoost website while that's installing, and I'll hit the R package directory here in, in the GitHub for XGBoost. Uh, it's worthy to note that you can, as I mentioned earlier, um, install directly from, from the bits in, in, in GitHub. And this is what I would recommend doing because of the frequent updates to XGBoost and the features get added quite regularly. Uh, if that seems a little bleeding edge for you, you can just install a pre-compiled version of XGBoost directly from CRAN, directly from the um, gold standard, if you will, uh, repository for our packages. Um, that's that's ob that's obviously a an option for you if you so choose. But for this video, we're going to go ahead and install directly from the latest bits uh, directly out of GitHub. Okay, sweet. So we are up and running. Let's just go ahead and start up our studio here. All right, now of course everything I'm about ready to do you could totally script out, but I'm just going to go ahead and use the uh, our studio editor, just, just a demo. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to install the DevTools package. Now the DevTools package essentially is your link between the R environment, the R tools build, build environment that we just installed, as well as the GitHub source code for XGBoost. So it's pretty easy. We just say, hey, we're going to install package, type in dev tools, click install, and our studio just generates the actual R script. Now, if you're a an R guru, this may seem extremely simplistic. And if you're mortally offended, I apologize. Um, I'm a GUI guy myself. So there you have it. Now, you'll see here that DevTools itself depends on a lot of things, so it's down. It's going to automatically download from CRAN the uh, all of the packages that DevTools depends on, and there's there's a number of them here. And you can see here that it's um, going to take a bit of time to install all that. So while that's running, let's go ahead and flip back to the XGBoost website. Uh, you can see here that there's quite a bit of good documentation uh, on XGBoost. For example, if you want to um, look at their walkthroughs, you can hit that. There's a whole bunch of R code here. Here's the MD file. Um, talk, look at the basic walkthrough. Here's all the source code. You can cut and paste it. These are also accessible directly from inside of the package using the demo feature in R, and I'll show that in a bit, but if you actually just want the, the direct source code, you can totally pull all that stuff up. So at heart, I would very much recommend exploring the XGBoost website. It, it's pretty good. Um, what's also really cool is if you can actually take a look at some example scripts from the Kaggle Higgs boson challenge here, um, which was XGBoost figured prominently in a large number of highly placed 
we, uh, highly placed teams in that particular competition, again, test into its power and versatility. All right, let's go ahead and scroll back, see how we're going here. All right, so we got DevTools installed. This is great, so we're ready to rock and roll, as, as my dad would say, sorry. Uh, so this command right here, we'll just go ahead and copy this. So this says, hey, look, you from the DevTools package, invoke the install GitHub function. And here's the address for the package that we're interested in. So we'll just copy that. Paste it in. Hit enter. And what this is doing is downloading, obviously, all of the code directly from the GitHub repo. And it's invoking all of the build steps that are necessary to actually get this up and running on Windows. Uh, you can see here, for example, it's invoking G++. So that's why you need uh, our tools, is to get that Windows version of G++ available in a location where R can find it. And if you're familiar with command line C and C++ from the Unix world, um, a lot of this will be familiar to you. If you're more of a Visual Studio Windows kind of person. This uh, may be a bit verbose. But this won't take long. I'm almost there. Okay, cool. Great. So, as I mentioned earlier, we can do the, uh, the demo command here inside of R, and what you get here is a list of R demos. So what I said is, hey, R, give me the list of demos that are available in the package XGBoost. Now this is basically showing that, hey, you know what? XGBoost built because this wouldn't work otherwise. And here's the demos that are available in the package of XGBoost. Now we'll go ahead and execute the basic walkthrough demo just so you can see it in action and then that way verify that in fact your build of XGBoost was successful. You're gonna need some you're going to need another package to make that one work, make that demo work to its fullest, and that's ggplot2. So we'll just do a, go ahead and install the ggplot2 package. Doesn't take but just a few seconds to get that up and running. And this is just because one of the functions that's invoked in this basic walkthrough demo that comes built into the XGBoost package uh, produces a graph using ggplot2. And if you don't have ggplot2 installed, then obviously it's not gonna work. Okay, cool. With that, we can say, hey, you know what? I want the basic walkthrough demo from the package xgboost. And it's ready to go. So we just hit enter and it's loading the package. And, oh, well, let's see, it says, look, this package is also necessary. Let's go ahead and uh, install that one. Oops, sorry. Believe it or not, um, if you don't know the full transitive closure of all of the packages you need, this is actually a common occurrence <laughs> in R where you try and do something and it says you need another package, so you install it, and then eventually, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and hit return to see the plot. We'll go ahead and zoom in on that. And you can see here, here's a um, plot of the feature importance for, from this demo. Looks like there's four variables. I'm not super familiar with what data set they're using here. Uh, but I won't drain all of the code here. You can see it, it's popped up from the demo, so you can take a look at it at your leisure. All right, there you have it. XGBoost built from the latest bits in GitHub in R on Windows. Happy coding.